a warm welcome to one and all very uh, good evening to everyone friends today is a very special day it's it's makar sankranti it's called sankranti in karnataka and in all places at all the states it is called uh, with different names but yeah uh, one thing is common that it is a harvest festival and it is uh, related to agri- agrarian and the farmers and the agriculture one thing is very important uh, uh, in agriculture that is water and today we have a very special person who would be giving and enriching uh, us with his vast experience in the similar fields in the same fields using his entire career in the uh, water resources management as well as uh, uh, helping karnataka to check its drought and various such things which would be, i would show in the coming sessions so before all i would just uh, ask you all request you all to uh, uh, like and subscribe the channel harita charcha and uh, in the last two uh, three editions we had brought uh, during the covid times also challenging times also for yoga and from wildlife uh, conservation and then uh, it, and, and then the fourth is sir uh, today sir let me uh, start with the introduction of sir we have mr uh, sri v s prakash ji with us who who is uh, hello sir hello hello samir mishra ji good evening and happy sankramana thank you thank you sankramana in karnataka we call it as sankramana sankranti festival so but anyway sankranti is the now the everybody says sankranti sankramana yes sankranti yes can you hear me it is audible yeah you are audible sir so uh, yeah. uh, let me introduce sir uh, dr v s prakash who is the founder and former special director of K- uh, karnataka state natural disaster monitoring center that is ks and uh, ks and dmc he was trained as a post graduate in the earth sciences from the central college bangalore he did his post graduate in exploration of geophysics from osmania university uh, hyderabad and post graduation in water resources with specialization in remote sensing and gis from international institute of aerospace and earth sciences netherlands he started his career in uh, far in 1973 as a field assistant so then t- he taught in the university as a lecturer he wo- he served for 5 years as a geologist has been a senior scientist at the central G- ground water board and had served in the ministry of water resources government of india before joining the government of karnataka as a director drought monitoring cell an autonomous body under the department of the Sci- earth science and technology the activities of uh, drought monitoring cell were enlarged and uh, founded as a karnataka state natural disaster monitoring center which is now called as ks and dmc his invaluable contribution uh, to karnataka in monitoring weather and climate variability details has been well appreciated beyond the karnataka state and whole india also knows it so he has also graced various platforms like being the advisor the registrar the international uh, institute of information technology bangalore triple uh, itb director dmc and ks rsec faculty of rajiv gandhi national institute of groundwater research and training dr prakash is at present member of the technical expert committee at karnataka state tanks conservation and development authority so that was his a very ideal journey from a field officer to the founder director at a uh, government of india and that's a gift to our nation as a uh, water man we can say or we can say the weather man in the high drought regions of karnataka so you are a really a gift for those people so today uh, proceeding with that uh, first question to you sir would be what made you pursue the remote sensing and gis uh what attracted you most in the hydrology or the natural disaster fields that you chose for the future yeah is a very interesting question samir and uh, probably you know <clears throat> those days uh, in 91 92 remote sensing gis was just you know uh, made a beginning it was the beginning of using remote sensing gis in 1982 83 84 85 in a very very small way in very very small way and i know that you know the water resources heavily depends on this sky in the eye you know remote sensing gis technology and i had the great opportunity of getting the endodge fellowship well maybe blessings of so many i don't know no it was a 
you know yeah, well there's a big story behind that let me not go into that but anyway uh, i got the introductory scholarship and uh, well i had the great privilege of uh, spending my time in netherlands and really dutch people even today i can say oh, well one of the best in the world as far as water is concerned so i have seen the people who are working in the water sector fully equipped equipped whenever they go out you know measuring the flow whatever it is you know data 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 they live in data they breathe data they drink data and so so it is it was uh, it was a wonderful experience for me so that's how you know promote the gs <clears throat> but had i not got the introduction fellowship i may not have gone okay spending so much money you know i got the introduction fellowship i could able to go there and uh, have a very uh, good learning experience for me and and well looking back also it makes me feel proud that uh, i was the first student to pass out with distinction yeah you know <clears throat> in the water resources sector mm, it was a nice time i still remember um, professor bosher and uh, many other you no know, uh is it is it it was that's how i got into remote sensing js okay sir okay. uh so yeah Yeah, that, that was a very interesting journey, and that's uh, how the fate chose you for this domain also. And yeah, so we have a uh, in that way. Uh, my second question is related to that only. So, water as an ingredient, how precious is, is it as a resource? What are the major challenges today? What do you see? No, is a is a water uh, is taken for granted. Let me be very clear. what is taken for granted just like air air and water is so very precious you can't fix a value for that but still you know, largely take, taken for granted this is what i can say in brief yes sir so uh, you had been leading uh, the case nmdc for years so how is karnataka state a bit different in terms of water resources or say natural disaster with the other states so what's your overall experience in that state particularly well <clears throat> no case in dmc is the 98 when i came to government of karnataka under protection and uh, took over drought monitoring cell keeping the water in mind you know we started uh, i started thinking about uh, weather monitoring system Uh, 20 years back, you know, uh, IoT. What we are talking about widely now, nobody was talking about IoT in 1998, 1999, 2000. You know, and well, well, it, you know, we talked about it, and uh, the idea is finally link it to water. But to have a good real-time weather monitoring system, nearly about 8,000 rain gauge sensor, 1,000. weather monitoring sensors real time data coming every 15 minutes then the, the vertical was you know, could could able to really put up the vertical strong vertical which is still remaining strong but but you know i had something more laterals so but at the time you know i completed 60 and i super annotated and uh, well i meant to see the laterals still coming out of the vertical which was created uh, well i don't blame anybody you know it happens you know but it's a long journey putting up that one vertical good weather monitoring system which was un uh, unheard of not discussed anywhere in the country and uh, it was it was just like you know just like you know uh, you no know, i said nobody was believing me the people said what automatic weather station what automatic rain gauge why do we need it we have got rain gauges plenty of rain gauges so no no they are manually operated and getting the data by post or telegram and uh, collating it compiling it making a sense out of it it will take one week time so it doesn't make any sense then without a, a taking rupee from anybody designing and developing a sensor indigenous sensor and Uh, believe me there was not even a single agency or manufacturing telemetry rain gauge at that time in the country 
my goodness not a single agency and well friends like you no we got together without taking one rupee from the government designed developed the prototype and well i took up one project from sakamadabad i saved 5 lakhs out of that out of that 27 sensors we put in 27 districts now at the time there were 27 districts in karnataka one each in each district and enable the mobile phone of the minister all the is officers chief secretary chief minister chief minister office and one day two day three day one month three month six month eight month nine o'clock turn what is the rainfall here 15 minutes if it rains more than 50 mm per hour turn so they said it works this fellow is uh, though talks i mean he is something he is doing then the dialogue started and well uh, it was a uh, uh, like a salesman i was running around but my own experience says your intention is good if you can prove yourself you can be a good salesman of the science science uh, has hardly few salesmen very good yeah 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 that uh, if uh, anything is not promoted well uh, then uh, the science couldn't reach the people and people start uh, 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 lots of scientific communities also oppose any good thing to come even father mendel who had a lot of hurdle to bring genetics so after uh, i wanted to say that and you have taken the words from me so uh, at, during 80s and all uh, you were putting iot's and putting so much uh, spatially and temporally sound resolution data all the 27 28 districts that was a big thing that, at those days so i want to just ask you in the same context that the low cost indigenous sensors uh, be it with the you are a big believer of iot at that time also and today we are seeing all the people running behind not only iot but uh, big data neural network and data is the basic thing that you had asked even th- those days so my question is how can the scientists help today with the low cost indigenous sensors to the farmers when you see when you say data on you know, the spectrum is uh, very big you know probably one end is as i said you know sensors without human intervention you know they measure but the, how reliable is it is it how dependable is it is another question correct no once you have thousands of sensors then the question comes the harness and integrity in my opinion science technology iot you say anything unless we are honest and, and the integrity is very high no technology can work no. I mean, let me say that very frankly unless we are passionate the honest and integrity So probably you can really have many people you know shoulder to shoulder standing with you and well uh, and well when i say that you know then and now about even today people are talking about uh, crowd sourcing every every person can be a data collector so mm-hmm. now uh, other end you know i said it's a big spectrum other end you know making every farmer every citizen you know who can really contribute to the data uh, data bank you know so that's why you know another um, you know over the last uh, two years i have taken another abhiyan which is called my rain mera barish mera kannada nanna male so there is you know a farmer can have his own rain gauge in his own field hardly casting nothing and he measures rainfall from then measures what is the flow in the nala nearby and estimates guesstimates soil moisture and its crop water requirement whether to irrigate or not to irrigate so a, a farmer making himself a, you know a, you know taking the role of a, a scientist atmanirbhar atmanirbhar so <laughs> so that is uh, and the nanna male this mera barish is catching up it is going on and uh, well it should be you know i think it can it should need to be both you know community contributing to data bank yeah. and also this iot uh, both the things certainly you know and it can be made you know those day as i said you know 
found that is the cheapest sensor in the world the tipping bucket rain gauge huh. which you design and develop but uh, somewhere i said very briefly you know the honesty and integrity integrity both goes hand to hand and beyond that i don't want to say anything yeah so uh, agromet services a lot of investment and funding has been in the research of agromet services the similar is with the what just you told i think that is also re- related to data only so what is your take on agromet services current status of india see it is agromet services uh, you know when it started when 2002 2003 I, that's the time when I had a very simple, at the time mobile phone entered the market. I had a small mobile phone and a landline and well, make the farmers know there is one person who can give some information, you know, and that's how it trickled. And believe me, I used to get a call midnight, night, um, 12 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, because the farmer, mid of the night, he comes out and looks at the sky. If it is very cloudy next day, if he has to harvest or do something, it really is, you know, he, he, he immediately used to call me. And well, I used to, and that association with farmers. Now, whatever, then Varunamitra on help desk, we created 30 line help desk, okay. 24 by 7, 365 days, and 2 million farmers have subscribed to it. But I am very, you know, very happy to say that Farmers, are even I superannuated the seventh year, even today I get 50 to 100 calls. Okay. Not only for the agromet advisories, and they share with me other things. The, what is the son is doing, what daughter is doing, what is happening, and well, my uh, daughter, you know, they some, you know, got, got admission in the engineering college, no cream will get, all talk to him. Please talk to him or her. make me to talk to them so that is a really wonderful feeling you know and sometimes farmers they simply call and then tell, tell me whether it is going to rain or not so he thinks that i know from where he belongs which village he belongs things like that and then i have to ask him no no pata tumhara gaon kaun kaun sa gaon hai to which village that is so, the services is, yeah Yes, sir. So, and I, you know, it is the data, ingestion of data, and is a modeling. Hardly we have got few weather modelers in the country. Very, very few, and we need to really support them in a big way. And uh, well, there is still a lot of scope in improving the weather forecasting. Simply saying that you know it is going to um, rain. Some parts of the district is going to rain heavily, scattered. light to medium to high so farmer of two acre two bigha he should be able to know how much it is going to rain when it is going to rain so that is a really big challenge lot of lot, lot more need to be done so yes. uh, how is this big data linked to hydrology sociology and the economy of nations sir this data information yes yes see anything for that matter uh, you need to have a vision of what i am doing what and what is supposed to be done is having a framework getting a in my data i mean i mean i want to share uh, you know this is what is the question whatever question is asking me was a question asked by mr narayan murthy who is the founder of infosys to be today deliberation he said prakash you tell me what what do you want the data to do for you i said uh, so data it should help me to get a good insight better insight so i have got 10 options if the data data analytic helps me narrowing down to three options out of 10 out of 10 there are 10 options in front of 10. me and if we can narrow down three options among the three probably using uh, preemptive analytics if you can help me in putting my wisdom my knowledge my experience Apart from that, you know, from three I will come to one and go at it. So this is what I look for. So that has same implication in the the socio economic, social and economic sector as well. Probably the descriptive analytics, inquisitive analytics, preemptive analytics. So 
So these are the things which helps us to get us a better insight. True. So the data mm-hmm. analytics you know, helps us. And one thing is certain, probably, it, it also goes along with uh, experience. That data is- alone. alone. Because when I was in Trivoli TV, he called a very, very renowned uh, uh, cardiac surgeon uh, for uh, some reasons, I don't know the name, the person. So he's a very renowned in the country. And uh, well, Triple ITB, they asked him, how much IT tool you use in your day to day? He said, no, I don't use much. So he said, why? No, because if you people want to help me in developing IT tool, a set of you, maybe about 10 people, need to since the morning I am ready till I call it a day. I need you, you to be with me, sit with me, walk with me, work with me, understand my the needs and develop, develop the IT tool for me. Then I, I will be able to use the tool. But that doesn't mean that the same tool can be used by another cardiac surgeon. So there is, there is you know, there's a practitioner and the IT experts really need to really come together. Come together. Come together, work together. So, I mean, that is... Uh, That's... Well, uh, you have given a, to yeah, so you have given a very true picture of uh, even uh, the main uh, linkage between not only the scientists and the farmers also in the prior question you had given how the people are still uh, in bondage with you till today that shows uh, from lab to land the true scientists are those who are able to be within the people or uh, that is the main agrarian uh, based people that are the farmers so really uh, moving towards the main uh, people, I would like to ask the role of women in agriculture. How do you see it, sir? Oh, they are, they are, they are playing already very important role, though uh, it, many people do not, uh, many, 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 we do agree, many, many, many people know that they play a very important role. I said in the My Rain uh, Avian, the women, the women are given a lead role, you know. I mean, they, uh, because they need a few bricks and a bottle and a funnel. And I have got one on my own rooftop. And uh, well, with Atenica, you know, morning, they, whatever water collected in the bottle, they measure in volume. In uh, They use the, the, the you know, bottles which they used to feed to the children, you know. That milk bottle is sufficient to measure the volume. <laughs> that. <laughs> that is so. So they and uh, really, I got few videos on the women measuring the rainfall and they do a very, very, very good job. Whatever, whatever they agree, they do a nice job. Otherwise, once they agree that, you know, and they t- say this much is rain, and uh, the husband, uh, oh, uh, baby bolte hai, behan jo bhi ho, huh? yeah. so, chalo, chalo. Oh, and then he will go out, see how much is the soil moisture, put his finger in the soil and look at the leaves huh? and estimate whether the, it needs irrigation or no irrigation. So let me just tell you this experience experiment, which is informal, not funded by anybody with uh, working with community, at that too, in a place like Kolar district, very close to Bangalore, which is arid area, semi-arid area, yeah. groundwater exploitation is very high, water is very, very scant resource there. So there, farmers, they say they are saving 40% water, okay. which, which otherwise would not have been possible. No government scheme, you bring any scheme, it is not possible. When the community realizes, see, 40% water is saved in the land. So that makes me to believe in woman and can really mend a man, bend a man and make him to learn new things. Yes, sir. Very truly, you have put the uh, real scenery from the villages and all those remote areas that are basically ignored. Even today, if you see on the limelights, they are always ignored at that section, not only the farmers, but uh, women, especially from the unprivileged society also. 
but uh, indeed they are the uh, you know the, they have a highest place in our hindu mythology also being the shakti and paramba but yeah true today you have given a really new picture of the women uh, with her gauge rain gauge so thank you for that and next question sir i would be asking a bit uh, questions with your speciality like uh, uh, so uh, can the interlinking of the rivers that uh, you had been very uh, since very long time it has been a debatable question debatable question interlinking of the rivers or that we call the interbasin sharing of the water can reduce the floods and the drought events that fulfill the growing water demand in all the sectors well if you got a very <clears throat> mota mota answer uh, yes but if you want a very you know go by thread wise and uh, look at the issues you know so uh, well there is interlinking intralinking so you when you look around there is lot of intralinking you know within a river basin hmm. within a river basin lot of lift irrigation schemes are coming up and we are just promoting a slogan don't allow even a single drop of rain to flow leave your land make it to really use it yeah. to the last drop and also we talk about uh, interlinking of rivers somewhere we need to have a clarity about it if we want to really rivers to be survived you know the areas when we take the entire river basin there is a donor area there is a beggar area yeah no the, the donor becomes a beggar everybody is a beggar okay. so what i see around is a water grabbers no i see no ne no what about many many schemes which we are talking about we are promoting water grabbing in a big way we give the name of water conservation water saving but otherwise are we water are, are we grabbing the water are we conserving the water if you have answer to this then comes interlinking interlinking number one second is the floods yes there are extreme events and it rains you know ek mahina ka barish or whatever is rain for a monthly spread over one month it rains in a day or two can we create infrastructure to hold that water and use it in the subsequent days subsequent so climate change. number 2 yeah. number 3 right from you just take the you no know, right from brahmaputra then narmada godavari krishna kaveri if you take the annual flow over the last 40 50 years all the rivers the annual flow is dwindling it's going down yeah it is dwindling because in the kaveri i was the expert witness for the interested water dispute for kaveri yes sir. and there the dispute had the privilege of standing in the box in supreme court so it really why jo pani ka jhagda jo hai i have tested it in very close uh, rain so what i mean to say is this uh, water is going to be a big issue a big issue in the days to come and uh, and we are not and we are not prepared we are not prepared yes sir so that's a really a true aspect that you have given that uh, there are many other branches also before coming to interlinking there are specific uh, other points to be learned and studied not directly go for interlinking so that's uh, i think that answers also to my question so so uh, you no know, role of remote sensing and gis today has also been increased not only in water resources but air pollution in all the different aspects of science remote sensing and gis and you had been uh, trained remote sensing and gis in those days so how can today uh for the sustainable development goals say specifically goal 6 how can remote sensing and gis uh prove or it can help in that aspect sir sustainable oh, development goal so it can be it can help in a very very big way but it can tell you uh this eye in the sky you know probably it can tell you what is really happening on the ground and to take it in take it in the proper way and uh and uh, making a snt policy or you no know, uh, any policy things like that it is the human which does it so remote sensing cannot do it 
So how good are we, you know, what the mode sensei says, are we prepared to accept it and <laughs> take it to policy level is a question, you know. Yeah, so remote good. sensing is a very good tool, is a very, very, you know, is a, a needless to say that, you know, now technology has improved, but a lot of ground truthing is required, remote sensing. Huh? Now, uh, there is a need for more ground truthing before they really, because you know, a lot of ground truthing is required. Because it is subject, it is subjective to a lot of corrections and. Uh, no. <coughs> yes, sir. That is the basic thing. Without ground validation or ground truth, think uh, as much as data from the upper sky or aerial view can be taken, but that can cannot be, uh, you know, very much truthed, and that can be biased from the preciseness also. That comes very truly, and but uh, we see that remote sensing GIS applications have vastly gone high in air pollution studies also in atmospheric studies, even in the disaster. And so you had been in this sector, disaster and natural disaster management sector for a very long duration. So that uh, has also answered my question. So where is water as a natural resource and lifeline is misused most by human consumption in the houses, settlements, construction sectors, industries or farmers? How you think should be sustainable water cycle or resource pipeline in the modern world? in the settlements and urbanization. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I feel is, you know, whatever sectors, all the sectors you mentioned, yeah. all the sectors have taken water for granted. Correct. It is uh, misused in all the sectors, largely, largely. And well, because a large share of water is used in agriculture sector, you know, we say about 85% is used in agriculture sector. Well, naturally, you know, if you take the volume, the quantity, you know, things like that, probably they are, they is largely misused in, uh, in the agriculture and irrigation sector. But otherwise, you know, if you take the unit, yeah, unit-wise, forget about the volume unit, you know, all the all the sectors, oh, unis biska farke, that's that's all. Uh, to, yes, how yeah. how you think should be sustainable water cycle? I gave an example of a farmer uh, family. They have saved 30, 30 to 40 percent of water. Yeah. So if it is possible, it is possible, and if all the sector stakeholders, they if they you know realize and uh, and accept caring and sharing and uh, taking caring of the water probably something uh, you know you can see a new world uh, with a, a water you know, sustainable water for a long time otherwise i don't uh, I, I mean i think uh, uh, very shortly we are going to have uh, you know fight for water within a city People may not steal your uh, uh, credit card. They will steal your water. If you have 10 bottles of water, they will come and same take away your water. Same thing is going to happen for air also, sir. We saw in this. Air, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. Air. Still, air is largely taken for granted because my son is uh, working for the, working the air quality sector. Uh, my son is working for a German company. And well, he brings the instrument and uh, indoor air quality, outdoor air quality when he measures and show me. I said, please don't show me. <laughs> because, you know, really we have taken for granted. Air quality is another thing, you know. So we talk about, uh, you know, this uh, air quality is one thing which is, we are very ignorant of. Correct. About water is, of course, right? And air is very, very ignorant, air quality is another very important thing. So, and, uh, yes, yeah. fully you have answered the question and this uh, has also shown that all the sectors are in par with each other. Nobody is behind, but uh, it comes to the human psychology. It comes to the human sensitive that we have to take the responsibility from our own insights. Then only this water can be conserved, this very unique 
precious resource can be conserved otherwise none policies or such can uh, they can come and aid and support but they cannot uh, make a bridge between this so my next question sir uh, i would uh, be a quick on that sir uh, what do you say considering a new wave of hydro irrigational developments and projects in the israel where would you think india stands in comparison your message to the common man of india you know how the the uh, we need to really encourage people uh, to uh, to understand and find a solution for their own problems you know probably we need to sit with them if you don't have time nothing can uh, nothing can come out probably, probably the common man is find out the, who is a scientist around who can sit with you and uh, help you and well for the government and the other non government sector we are creating a army of uh, uh, barefoot scientists you now who can really uh, work together and uh, it is really convergence convergence coordination collaboration and also co-acting you know we need to really co-acting is very important but uh, so probably these are the things which may help us and uh, well and now common man mm, well he he cannot express his needs you now to my to my to my knowledge though uh, all we say no 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 i'm here kar raha hu things still a lot of convergence is required to address the uh, the person at the last the last of the last mile you know uh, so there is a lot more needs to be done so people need to realize that you know let like media like this you now people need to realize there are because now even after 7 years people call me how they google and the google google gives my name and anybody calls me so in mean, you got me there's a there's a message the it is uh, is a savior you know and certainly the days to come look around the people who who are who, are, who, are, who can be of some help to you to the common man and well the days have changed and well a proper person who are there there on the helping side they need to learn relearn and the, the government and the ngos the corporate sector need to promote them and yes. provide the support to them yes yes sir that's a very good message also so your message to the budding entrepreneurs and the scientists the young scientists the youth of india how can they research in the fields of uh, water or environment Uh, or say in the IoT or remote sensing and GIS and are we proper fundings? So, what is your insight on that? What people should, in which way they should uh, move ahead for the future of India, entrepreneurs and scientists? Because my own experience, I will talk from my own experience. When I started, as I said in ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, you know, it was just like an entrepreneur. Though I was uh, getting my salary. to put a system in place not a, a rupee in my pocket you know for getting a funding and once by sab chao ye karo then it, it was a journey of 16 years by the time i could able to put that particular pillar it didn't happen in 16 months or 16 days it was a long journey so but still you know when you look back you know it is very satisfying so my only uh um, i'd like to say that and there is a large potential available whatever whatever has been done maybe 100 times more 1000 times more uh this uh, um it related issue scientific uh, you know science science sent a contribution there is a see there is a uh, science there is a technology there is engineering the three components though appear to be similar there is a there's such a subtle difference between whether you want to practice a science a technology or engineering as well okay. normally engineers they are on the grammar side the so science and technology <laughs> people on the non grammar side non grammar so where they need to come together three friends one good in 
science, another is technology, another is engineering. Probably, I mean, that's the way I think, you know, you can make a team and they will find out a solution and demonstrate it and uh, well take it forward and maybe i mean suddenly i i can only say that uh you will you will be able to survive you will be able to um, make life life out of it and uh, make the life comfortable to others also so very nicely you have shown the picture how uh, there should be a mutual uh, co-acting and people should work together there's, there's a some way there is a communication gap uh, it had existed so that would be a you know for a game changer if at all we try to you know decrease that uh, try to bridge that gap between uh, different domains of people and different profession people so that we can un- understand also the what w- value of water as other countries and benchmarking like israel and all have done so uh, one more thing came to it's my personal question oh, like, sorry sorry to interrupt yeah you said israel yeah there is most common herd when oh israel israel no, no just just if you just go a little deep yes sir whatever israel does if they do it in one paise same thing if you do it here we spend 30 rupees why kind of think about it that's the biggest thing we are technology is same we may be better than that probably i feel that israel is half of karnataka you know, little, little little less than that it is little, little more than bangalore yeah and what is india or what is karnataka state that's right and uh, decentralization they use the decentralization and their challenges are much more different than our challenges it is not simply quoting israel to solve all the problem it is much beyond that you have got much more higher potential than that as i said very nicely you told that there should be a balance integrity passion yes 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 so at uh, what would you tell about the india water policy and the newly drafted karnataka water policy Yeah, in the newly, I was a task force member in the water policy 2019. Well, I don't want to say much, you know, but anyway, we made it, uh, <clears throat> you know, a policy uh, which brings in more data in decision making. Correct. In making, you know, I'm adding another 20,000 sensors, uh, weather sensors, and... Uh, another uh, 10000 surface water monitoring sensors and something like a million you know um, uh, sensors for measuring the groundwater groundwater is hidden groundwater the bore well and tube well yeah to bring in a system of prognostic analysis of health of the bore well which is non existent right now it is non existent no it's it's not over mama suddenly says pani aana band ho gaya another board so these are in in its in its in that way 2019 uh, water policy has uh, uh, many things uh, uh, maybe as if still if really this uh, uh, it will really give us a new learning new way of uh, looking at managing the water resources yes sir uh, so with concluding question uh, what is your message to the audience who are just watching it on harit charcha platform what would you like to uh, briefly say then uh, please yeah um, uh, learn to uh, converge collaborate quiet very nice message to everyone so with this i would like to uh, thank everybody who all are watching the session today and indeed we have got a very uh, uh, auspicious guest today on this special uh, sankrant festival also who had been talking about uh, how uh, who had been using iot on those days and even remote sensing and gis for the weather forecast disaster management as well as the drought prone areas of karnataka so not only karnataka his good deeds have gone to the nation and international wide so how we can imitate it the same thing 
for the future generations for the future youth scientists entrepreneurs how can they uh, help in uh, making framing policies for water not only water he also threw light on the air pollution and air quality also as well as how uh, co uh, mutual working with each other of different professions and the human psychology should be improved for for water to be uh, felt as a very precious resource so thank you so much sir for your uh, time and really today also you said that there are a lot of things to be learned but yeah you uh, your experience is extremely important for all the audience which would indeed help them thank you so much thank you it was nice opportunity talking to you and to the friends through the opportunity you gave i mean uh, it was nice talking to you overall i enjoyed and and uh, thank you and thank all the people who are listening to this program thank you thanks thanks thank you very much thank, thank you thank you